<laughs> so they told their leader, they said, now nah, we can attack. And they did attack. And they took northern Spain. It is the young men and women. The young men and women. How are they growing up? What interests them? What is occupying their mind that would determine the future of Islam? Not the old men. This generation, the younger generation. My children, my sons, my daughters. What is your interest? What are you thinking about? What are your goals? What are your ambitions? Women, girls, or jihad? And Quran. That will make the whole difference. The crusaders... When they noticed that the Muslims were weak, became busy with materialistic things, they moved in Europe to unite, to get Jerusalem back. Seven countries decided to attack the Muslims. Three kings, the king of France, the king of Britain, and the king of Germany, led the armies themselves. Do you know how many were sent to conquer Palestine from Europe? 500,000 were sent to conquer Jerusalem. From the sea, from the north. And they did. It's a long story. I have explained it in my latest series, Tariq al-Quds wa Palestine, still to be published very soon, inshallah. And they did. And the Muslims were conquered. One small story to tell you why were we conquered. The German army came from the north, went through Turkey to northern Syria to the city of Antakya. Antakya was surrounded from the land. The only access they had was the sea. Muslims, the strongest Muslims at that time, closest, closest to them were the Muslims in Egypt. So they sent a delegation from Antakya who was standing, did not fall down. If Antakya did not fall down, Jerusalem would not have been taken. It was in the way. So they, for six months, they resisted. And they continued to fight. But they needed money, they needed food, they needed weapons. And nobody can reach them from the land. So they sent a ship, a quick boat, to Egypt. They met with the Egyptian leader, asking him for support. So he sent with them a delegation who met with the leader of Antakya. And the leader of Antakya was surprised that the Egyptian leader was not even thinking of money or weapons or food to send to them. The whole idea that he sent a delegation with them is for two reasons. He said, I have heard about a very beautiful she-slave in Antakya. I would like to buy her. And I have heard about a man who draws very good drawings on the walls. I would like to hire him. When that letter reached Antakya, Antakya surrendered. That's how Antakya fell down. It's like the Muslims in Palestine shouting, we are being killed. And Muslims watch movies. 
That's what is going on now and then. So, it fell down. 99 years Palestine was in their hands. In three periods. The first period was 88 years. And then it came back. Jerusalem came back to us. And then it was conquered again for 10 years. And then we took it back. And then it fell in their hands for one year. And we took it back. So, 99 years, Muslims did not give up. 99 years, they decided to continue their struggle. They decided not to go to hotels and negotiate. But to continue jihad. How did Muslims get Jerusalem and Palestine back? We all know about Salahuddin. But we don't know where did Salahuddin come from? Suddenly a man comes and the ummah becomes good? No, that did not happen. About 100 years before Salahuddin, there were two scholars, one of the greatest scholars of Islam, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, Abu Bakr al-Tartushi. These are scholars who are not only busy with books, they are busy with the ummah, the situation of the ummah. So they saw that the ummah is weakening and the enemies will soon attack it. That is even before the crusaders came. So they decided to go to the leader of Islam, Al-Khalif Al-Abbasi in Baghdad. Asking him to change the situation and declare jihad. And he said, yes, I'm with you. We will do it. And he was again busy with the slaves. <laughs> he did not do anything. They only heard words and words and words. Only propaganda and media. He would stand in the masjid. We must declare jihad. Who would declare jihad? You must declare jihad. <laughs> and he does nothing. So Abu Bakr al-Tartushi and Abu Hamid al-Ghazali saw that there is no hope in the Muslim leaders. We need more than that. See, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry I'm taking so long. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you history that repeats itself. If you don't understand history, you will not understand how things move now and in the future. History repeats itself. These scholars who were true scholars that cared about the ummah, not only about their positions and their salaries and their books, they cared about the ummah. They decided to take things in their own hands. And they started to collect the scholars and they started to educate Muslims about Islam. And they emphasized on young men and women. And this movement was called Harakat Ihya Ad-Din. Ihya Ad-Din. To raise Islam again in the hearts of Muslims. And they succeeded. And suddenly this movement started to spread. Some cities, it was more effective than others. Some workers for Islam were more devoted and hard workers than others. See, Islam, although it is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can say, be and Islam shall be and conquer the world. But Islam does not work this way. It never works this way. You have to struggle.